All right, guys, here we are in September. This is your seller series description. So uh, we're on the back of the delivery truck. Uh, the sun is setting. Uh, let's get into fall. Um, we've got two whites and four reds. We are definitely like tipping the scale like over to the red direction here, which I'm excited about. I feel like I drink a lot of white wine at home, but like when it starts to cool down a little bit, I really want to dig into the red. So let's jump in. You know, um, let's jump in. Here we go. So this is Presquil. And Presquil is a producer that um, is from Santa Barbara, the Santa Maria Valley. And this is 100% Chardonnay um, that we are working with from the Murphy family. So there's some really, really smart people that are working um, on this project right now that have amazing access to top, top sites in Santa Barbara. They've also planted their own vineyard um, you know, in 2007, they bought 200 acres in the Santa Maria Valley. About 70 of those are planted uh, to Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Syrah, which for me is kind of like a bit of an apex for uh, you know wine, like a nice little triangle right there. Um, but they have done a really, really lovely job at interpreting uh, you know Santa Barbara Chardonnay, and I mean I hate to say like, but like kind of a more Burgundian style. Like, and what I mean by that always is just with a little more balance. Like let the oak do some support, but just kind of like let it kind of, uh, let the wine and, and the fruit kind of really do most of the talking. So it's a wine of energy. It's a great like opportunity to start out with a California white wine here that brings freshness and poise and like just really, really delicious wine. So going to the Loire uh, River Valley, you know, south and west of Paris, this is Laura David. Uh, Laura David is a very, very young uh, vigneron you know, she uh, has winemaking in her blood, like she, uh, especially like Loire uh, winemaking, but she's in Montlouis sur Loire. So Montlouis sur Loire is a village that is uh, on the southern uh, banks of the Loire River Valley and where Chenin Blanc really starts to rival its kind of more famous, uh, you know, sister across the river, in, you know, in Vouvray, you know, if you were to ask most people, like, uh, you know, where does Chenin Blanc come from? I think a lot of people just say, you know, Vouvray, or if, if they even knew it all. Like, but Vouvray kind of is the benchmark for a lot of people. And Mont Louis sur Loire, like, is becoming this kind of like next frontier for really, really high quality, uh, you know, Chenin Blanc. And Chenin Blanc, as you probably have like been following along, is like one of our favorite grape varieties to feature in this, um, in in this, uh, you know, kind of a six pack because. It brings so much uh, fruit, and so much kind of depth and dimension. So it's really, really important, uh, like kind of like uh, hunting grounds for us. So this bottle came from our friend uh, Kristen Watts, you know, who's kind of on the ground in, in France, like providing uh, some amazing uh, opportunities for us with uh, new producers. So uh, this is a dry Chenin Blanc from Montlouis sur Loire. Really, really lovely wine here. So. Um, Another great young vigneron from France. This is Jean Bertrand, um, and this is the uh, his uh, Pure Jus or the Julianas uh, bottling. So this is a really, really unique uh, uh, bottling from Beaujolais. So Julianas, as you might know, like is one of the ten crews of Beaujolais, and uh, that is where we uh, see the granitic soils, kind of like the limestone and granitic soils from the north, versus the more clay dominant wines from the southern part of Beaujolais. It's 90% uh, Gamay and 10% uh, Chardonnay. It's a kind of a unique blend. Like you really, really don't see this very often. Um, but then again, you don't really don't see a lot of winemakers like Jan uh, uh, very often as well. Um, you know, the uh, Bertrand family uh, you know, has uh, some great uh, vines for themselves, but they also farm a little bit uh, and purchase a little bit of fruit for some of their uh, uh, bottlings as well. So. You know, this is normally like about a $50 bottle. And uh, in this feature, it comes across as uh, more like a $25 bottle, which is really, really um, 25, 27, somewhere in there. Like an amazing, amazing value for uh, high quality Beaujolais. So really, really excited uh, to feature this guy's wines. Like love, love, love this young energy in Beaujolais. Very little SO2, just awesomely dynamic uh, gamut. Moving on to the Alto Piemonte, this is um, in a producer that we're working with called Imazio. And Imazio 
I don't know. I don't know if they're like more famous for their honey or for their uh, for their Nebbiolo, but like whatever they're doing, they're kind of doing it right. Like we tend to feature natural wines in this um, in this uh, six pack, and uh, but natural wines that first and foremost represent where they come from, uh, but just taste good. Like really, really taste good. And this is a wine that um, you know we tasted about a month ago, and we're just kind of like blown away. Like really, really high quality Nebbiolo. And you know what? You don't always have to hang on Barolo and Barbaresco to experience uh, high quality Nebbiolo. Um, it really kind of does need to come from Piedmont, in my opinion. Um, I love, love playing around with Nebbiolo from here and there, but Piedmont is really where it's at. So um, Imazio is kind of a new producer for us, but it's an area just west of this Appalachian Colline Novarese. It's just west of, of uh, Milan, so kind of north and east of kind of our uh, kind of standard area that we think of, you know, Roland Barbesco. But lovely, lovely, uh, uh, complex and aromatic uh, Nebbiolo. So moving way, way south. And um, I don't know if we have ever featured an Argentine wine, which I don't know, like I, I think I attribute my start of my career uh, in, uh, you know, to, to experiencing, uh, you know, Argentine wines and, and here we are like maybe like talking about our first one for this series Sebastian Zuccardi um, an amazing young winemaker uh, who I met and tasted with a couple years ago and was really really inspired by you know uh, Sebastian's like uh, you know kind of just free thinking just his take on uh, what it means to be a winemaker in Argentina right now and how it's yes like Malbec is really important it's important for all things Argentine wine. But it doesn't always have to be this kind of blocky, monolithic, all black fruit wine. And it doesn't have to always be all Malbec. Um, so for a winemaker like Sebastian to kind of step outside the box a little bit, work with some concretes, um, think about other grape varieties and feature them as well. Like this is his Cabernet Franc. Um, it's aged in large uh, oak barrel. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't remind me of, of wines from the Loire, like Chinon, but it doesn't necessarily remind me of wines from uh, Mendoza as well. You know, it's the south of uh, Mendoza where this is grown in the Uco Valley. Um, and in that area, we're starting to see some really, really dynamic wines. Um, you know, we're starting to see a lot of really, really fun stuff out of Argentina. And I feel like Sebastian Zuccardi is leading the charge in a lot of ways and making a wake for other winemakers to really kind of come in his path and say, hey, like, we don't always have to make these uh, big kind of heavy wines for, for whatever market and for whatever uh, expectation. So it's fun to see, really, really fun uh, Cabernet Franc right here. So a grape that I love uh, on its own. Finishing up in California, uh, we're looking at Piedra Sassi. And Piedra Sassi makes uh, really, really high quality Syrah. Um, this is Sashi Mormon um, and you know and his wife and his family like uh, you know his uh, his partner makes like very high quality uh, breads and, uh, and baked goods and Sashi like is an absolute ace like making some of the absolute best you know Pinot Noir uh, you know Syrah and Chardonnay in Santa Barbara you know he partners up oftentimes with um, you know Raj Parr and Stoltmans and like, like he is an ace in California making great wines. So I would say that um, for us to be able to feature his 2019 uh, uh, Santa Barbara Syrah like is is huge for us. We uh, you know we uh, you know, featured uh, you know uh, a dinner a, a couple months or a couple weeks ago with uh, a full range of you know Chardonnay, uh, Pinot Noir, and, and Syrah, and I loved tasting through this again. And it had been a year since I had tasted it last, and the wine. Syrah is one of the most beguiling wines. Like, I love it. I love kind of exploring uh, the world of Syrah. Um, and New World Syrahs can be a bit of a maze, like a bit of, maybe a bit of like a land, you know, kind of like a minefield at, time, at times. But this was just a real, real treat. It has kind of that savory, um, kind of wild Northern Rhone quality with just enough California fruits to make everything really, really interesting. So that is September. Um, 
again, like I, I love where we're at with uh, this uh, this month's six uh, six bottles. So it's available, uh, you know, tomorrow uh, mid afternoon. So give us a call, email us, uh, reserve it. Um, but again, twenty percent off always uh, these bottles. It's about one hundred sixty bucks after the discount. But we hope to see you in the shop.